Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome once again to Come Dancing. We've come back to the charming Cotswold Spa Resort of Cheltenham. We're in the town hall for the second semi-final. Last week, you may remember, Wales did so well. But we're going to find out who is going to meet them in the final. Because this week we have the Midlands and West versus Northwest. The best of those two will go into the final. And to give them the help they need, we have the best of music on the stand. Here is the man with the band on the stand, Mr. Andy Ross. Behind the scenes, Will Tamil will be describing the dancers to you, and we'll begin in the exotic Latin American section, and I think you're going to find that we have a really exciting competition on our hands this week, as we begin with a samba. And here it is, Love Me Tonight. <laughs> Surely a lovely couple for Midlands and West David Griffin and Adele Preston. Now, as you'll know, if you've watched Come Dancing over recent years, we've two of the top teams battling it out tonight and two top dancers here in David and Adele. So the British champions have danced all over the world, from Hong Kong to Finland, from Canada to South Africa. They're still very much amateurs, but I wonder for how much longer. As it is, they describe themselves as full-time dancers, so it's probably just a matter of time. It's Peter Cooper and Jane Tyra, and indeed the Northwest has just lost two valued members of its team to the professional world. And stepping in to take up the vacancy very impressively, I may add, are Peter Cooper and Jane Tyra. Already British youth team members, and if practice makes perfect, then they're well on the way to perfection. Taking part in about a hundred competitions a year, and in the peak season between February and May, that can mean four or five a week. If that's the standard we're going to see tonight, we're really going to be in for a treat. How fantastic, just for our first dance. I want you to know that the jive is alive and well and living in come dancing. And Andy Ross is going to take us back to the moments when I used to pick my pops. It's your 16. James McKechnie and Dan Lewis dancing for Midlands and West. And also in blue for the Northwest, it's Christopher Johnson and Nicola Cranshaw. may not be quite 16, but not that much older. James McKechn and Dan Lewis, who we've seen on these programs quite a few times now. Last year, they took part in their first European Championships, and my word, they didn't do badly, coming in sixth. That was held in Frankfurt, and uh, they tell me they, uh, in Germany, put a lot of store by these competitions. They turn out to be real social occasions, just like cum dancing, in fact. Like their Northwest teammates in the Latin section, Christopher and Nicola are also members of the British Youth Team and indeed in 1982 were winners of the closed British Youth Championship. They too have had their share of travel, Germany, East and West, Denmark, France and Yugoslavia. Christopher, who is from Ormskirk, is a trainee accountant and uh, he can always go over his figures with Nicola, who uh, works for the Inland Revenue.
No, oh, that is a real jukebox hit for Johnny Burnett, too. You're 16. This is where we find out just how good they were. I thought they were absolutely incredible, but we have to judge them and we have to get a professional to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the great judges of ballroom dancing and the great dancer himself, Michael Siliano. Okay. Will you please let us have your marks? First for the samba. The samba, two to Midlands and West and one to North West. Thank you. And now, if you have a kind enough, let's have your mark for the jive. And for the jive, one one. One one. Yeah. You see what your one one has done? It puts Midlands and West one point ahead, and not only one point, but one section. It means they've won a section. Michael Stiliano, thank you very much indeed. Thank we shall much. be meeting you a little later in the programme. Thank you. But now we're going to move from that section to the elegance of old time. And if you could imagine getting a tune by Duke Ellington that he wrote in the 30s called In My Solitude and had it dance as a saunter reve, well, you're in for a treat. Tonight, Andrew and Julie Warbrick have uh, been married now uh, in the, uh, the Come Dancing Close season. That happened while we were off the air. They're now living in Nuneaton, a town made legendary, I seem to recall, by one Larry Grayson. They're former British under 21 champions, and they came fourth at the British Open last year and hold titles of Middlesex, East Anglia, and the East of England. Forgive me for saying it, I think Tom and Rosemary Kane are splendid examples of how an older couple can bring real elegance to old-time dancers. They are in fact an outstanding partnership, having won most of last year's major senior competitions. They're from Bevington in the Wirral, they've four children, and uh, they'll very shortly be celebrating their silver wedding anniversary. in my solitude as a saunter reve. I met this fellow when we were in Blackpool. He was called Ernie then. He's Ernie now. And he is their most ardent supporter. Well, it was in the 30s that Mr. Ellington wrote that number. And strange enough, in the 30s, all the old-time ballroom championships were held in Blackpool. And that's why this is called a filed war. Thank you. 
Fowled Waltz for Midlands and West, Mark Payton and Jacqueline Davis, who've been partners for no less than 13 years, would you believe? They're both from Birmingham, which is not, I suspect, where Jacqueline indulges her hobby of pony trekking. I don't think they're allowed on Spaghetti Junction, are they? And uh, in the odd jobs competition, what about this for Mark? He's an office partition fitter. Now, you don't find many of them unless you know where to look. enough walking for him is a keen hiker too which uh, maybe where Anne Marie comes in with all that shoe leather to worry about quite useful I'd have thought to have a partner who's a sales assistant in a shoe shop they're northwest of England champions and in fact recently danced off with the English amateur title Dr. Zhivago danced to a filed wolf. And now we're going to find out how the scores are going to alter. I'm going to introduce you now to a man who has in his time been a, both a professional and an amateur champion in old time ballroom dancing, and also is a Carl Allen Award winner. Ladies and gentlemen, Jack Briggs. <laughs> yeah, it seems an odd thing to say because obviously old time dancing is old time, but has it changed much over the years? Oh, considerably, yes. It, it's moved out an awful lot more. It was very circular at one time. Now it's extended its action and is more flowing. Good. Well, you flow, please, into your marks. First of all, if you will, for the Santa Reve. Uh, Midlands and West, one. Northwest, one. Thank you. <laughs> and now, let's have your marks for that uh, filed wolf. The Midlands and West, two, and the North West, one. Midlands and West, still in the lead with six and North West, four. But Midlands and West have got two sections, actually, to their credit. Thank you very much, Jack Briggs. Each week, we've had the pleasure of the company on this program of our charming guest from New York, Vicky Regan, and her British partner, Peter Maxwell. And we're going to meet them again tonight, but I'm going to get the young lady herself to tell you about the dance. Ladies and gentlemen, Vicky Regan. Thank you again, David. As you can see, I'm alone in introducing this number tonight, as I thought I would let Peter do all the work. But really it's to demonstrate how dance teams very often in their shows use the associated arts to cover for costume changes and or just variety. As an example of that tonight, Peter is going to do a number using a cape. The beauty and the skill of this particular technique is for the dancer to create as many patterns and shapes as possible with the cape, still employing dance movement and intricate footwork. So let's watch Peter do his interpretation of the cape dance to the music Malagania. <laughs>
Vicki Regan and Peter Maxwell will be back in our program with us next week, by which time, of course, we will know which of these two teams will be in the finals and who will be taking on Wales. Let's have a look at the scoreboard just to remind ourselves of progress so far. And you can see that not even at the halfway mark yet, but Midlands and West have got six points, the North West four, but uh, Midlands and West have got uh, gone ahead with winning two sections. And that is, of course, a very important part. But we now come to probably one of the most exciting parts of come dancing, the offbeat section. And in the offbeat section, you find it employs a large number of the younger generation to perform. And we're going to see the team from the Midlands and West first. Now go to dance to War of the World. Let's meet Body Talk. familiar sight for regular come dancing viewers body talk making yet another appearance for Midlands and West on this occasion I think you'll agree with a really interesting routine at times almost like that of a formation team they're based in Birmingham where they're trained by Simon Pearson and the team includes two pairs of sisters I can tell you they kept very busy all year long being very much in demand for charity shows and in uh, the competition field recently won the IDTA Disco Championships, which I, I should perhaps translate for you. That stands for the International Dance Teachers Association. West have really thrown down the challenge with their offbeat number, but now we're going to see just how North West will actually take up that challenge, and much in the same mood, they're going to dance to John Williams' music to Star Wars. Let's meet Galactic Invaders. Age offbeat section tonight, isn't it? Star Wars and now Galactic Invaders. Well, their name may have changed, but like Body Talk, quite a few of these dancers are regulars on the program. And once again, for the Northwest, they're led by Wayne Newhouse and uh, Bonnie Barr. They've yet to take their great step for mankind, uh, and they have a mission, I can tell you, to bring sweetness and light to a warring planet. That's the storyline. Let's see if it has a, a happy ending.
galactic invaders indeed. As you know, for our off-beat section, we always welcome a celebrity judge. And we have a very splendid celebrity judge this week, ladies and gentlemen, a former Miss United Kingdom, Carolyn Stewart. Carolyn? Well, lovely to see you. Of course, we saw quite a bit more of you in a recent movie. <laughs> yes, Octopussy. The costumes didn't cover a lot, really, did they? They didn't, no. no. They were rather expensive. Yes. Are you a, are you a Roger Moore or a, or a Sean Connery? Well, I have part? to say Roger, but I'm biased, of course. Good. Now, put your mind, as I'm sure you have already done so, with your colleagues, Jack Briggs and Michael Stilianos, and tell us what marks you're going to award for the offbeat section and Midlands and West first, please? Five points for Midlands and West, and the North West, four. Well, the scoreboard says Midlands and West, 11 points, and three sections, and the North West, eight, and no sections as yet. Thank you very much indeed, Carolyn Stewart, for being with us, and your two colleagues. We move on now to another section, which is labelled quite simply modern and for the modern we're going to begin with a tango and what a tango will the dance to jealousy <laughs> Midlands and West, we're looking now at Jonathan and Diane Haywood. And the North West, it's Andrew Sinkinson and Lorraine Barry. They've been dancing together for ten years and married for five of them, a Nottingham couple, Jonathan and Diane, and Jonathan in fact started his dancing career at the age of six, spurred on no doubt by mum and dad, who are very active dancers themselves. Last year, they, uh, Jonathan and Diane that is, had trips to Italy, Germany and Holland, but uh, tell me that for 1984 they'll be concentrating on the major domestic competitions. In their three-year partnership, Andrew and Lorraine have been making steady progress from British and European youth champions in 82. They've now moved up to the next category for dancing competitions, which is, of course, the amateur. And last year came in a very healthy fourth in the British championships. with Jealousy, probably one of the best known of all tango tunes. Andy Ross is now going to revive memories with uh, not only his band but with his singers as well of the late Mario Lanza. For we're going to have a, a Viennese waltz dance to Sigmund Romberg's drinking song. Sure, not a drop as past there, but tonight, uh, Paul Holmes and Kate Fisher for Midlands and West. He's uh, a financial consultant from Birmingham with a couple of exotic hobbies to his name, windsurfing and archaeology, would you believe, and uh, she's a fashion model who's not to be outdone, can claim to be a, a pretty good ice skater. As members of the British team, they've travelled to Hong Kong last year, and they're also uh, back home uh, Welsh Open Pop Champions. We 
Meanwhile, for Northwest, Robbie Litchfield and Barbara Salt, you'll not find a more dedicated or valued couple in any team. They're great exponents of the ten dance speciality and uh, have in fact just returned from Finland where, believe it or not, they won the Lapland competition in temperatures outside anyway of minus 30. A rather warmer welcome for them here tonight. from Sigmund Romberg's The Student Prince, which, just for the record, was first produced in London in 1926. We'll find out which of our two teams will be really toasting themselves as winners tonight as we move on and have the judgment for that particular section. And here's a man who is both president and chairman of two of the most important bodies in the world of ballroom dancing, ladies and gentlemen, Leonard Morgan. Leonard, would you be kind enough to tell me what those two bodies are? Yes, certainly. I'm chairman of the official board of Ballroom Dancing, which is the British Houses of Parliament of Dancing, and president of the International Council of Ballroom Dancing. Mm. Will you please let us have your marks? First for the candidates. One, two. So that's Midlands and West, one, and North West, two. And now, if you will, and will you give me Midlands and West first, that's what we require, for that uh, Vienna Eagles. One, one. <laughs> well, that brought, as you see, the North West up closer to that uh, score of Midlands and West, 13 to 11, 3 to 1. Thank you very much indeed, Leonard Morgan. We're going to leave competition behind for a moment and let the competitors relax, let the scorers relax, and what two of the best uh, British professional dancers give in the perfect demonstration. One of the members of this team has already been on this program because he is that Latin American judge we met earlier. To dance with his wife, Lorna Lee, here is Michael Cillian. <laughs>
I'm afraid that uh, having seen Michael Stilianos and Lorna Lee, it means that we've come to the last section in our Come Dancing program for this week. But what a section it is. It's the formation dancing. And as you can see, already one of the teams is uh, on the floor in Cheltenham, ready to perform for us. So let's have the team representing Midlands and West. It's the Stardust Latin American team. things you'll notice about both formation teams tonight is the sheer energy of their performance and there's uh, some particularly high speed stuff coming from the Stardust Latin team here. They're trained by Jean Graves at her school in Glossop in Derbyshire and they've been making quite a name for themselves around the world, coming fifth in the World Formation Team Championships in Germany. And uh, they've been especially invited to Hungary last year where formation dancing is just getting started. They made such a hit there that uh, a return visit is on the cards for this year.
What a marvelous performance there from the Stardust Latin American team representing Midlands and West. And as you saw, they've got one of their young supporters. And let's see what happens when we meet the final dancers of the night, trained by Bob Dale, the City of Manchester Latin Formation Team. <laughs> Something that always strikes me about this team is how perfectly proportioned the girls are. Uh, not just individually, I hasten to add, but that too, but uh, collectively, I mean. They're very tall as well, which uh, gives the team an added elegance, it seems to me. They're the senior members of the Bobdale Stable, which has produced some really excellent dancers over the years, many of whom have gone on to make real names for themselves. In this routine, look out for the number of times the dancers make lines, one of the hardest things to do in formation dancing, and something that if it comes off well, can give the team the edge in the judges' eyes, and that's going to be all important tonight. of Manchester Latin formation team there, dancing for the title holders Northwest. Let's quickly refresh our memory, have a look at the scoreboard, see where we are. Midlands and West just two points in the lead, so it really does rest on everything now. Judges, you are there, you have, I take it, uh, come to your decision. It's probably a hard one. Leonard Morgan, will you be the spokesman team? Yes, certainly. Uh, it has been a very close contest between two brilliant teams. We have awarded Midlands and West four points, 
and Northwest Five. <laughs> Just look at that result. You can see that the Midlands of West have beaten the title holders and will go forward into the finals next week here at the Cheltenham Town Hall when they will meet Wales for the Come Dancing 1984 Championship. Until then, on behalf of Andy Ross and Bruce Hamill, it just remains for me to say good night and keep dancing. <laughs>